a lot of people are talking and asking me what my opinion about Jake Paul versus Anision Gibb 2 would look like. Now, first, first things first, I have to say I'm a big fan of Gibb. I think Gibb's a great guy. You know, he's he's a, a great representation of hard work, dedication, heart, all of the above, man. I, I, I can't speak highly enough of Gibb. But that being said, we have to understand that, frankly, in my opinion, Gibb and Jake Paul should never have fought in the first place. Okay, if you actually look at it and go back, Gibb was the only guy that was willing to step up and fight Jake Paul in the first place. That's why he got the fight. But when you look at the two facing off, the size difference is almost comical. Like, frankly, they had no business being in the ring together. And that's not a knock on Gibb at all. That's just a knock on, I mean, the commission more than anything for letting a fight like that happen. Jake Paul probably walks into the ring at 210 pounds. Now, a lot of people don't understand weight cutting, so they don't understand that, you know, Jake Paul weighs in the day before at 190 pounds, but he most likely drains some water weight from himself, you know, cuts weight to get to that and fights at that weight. Well, in reality, he's probably fighting at 200, 205, or 210, around there. And especially if you look at him now, he's even bigger than he's ever been. Gibb weighs in at an actual 180 pounds. He might cut a little bit of water weight from 185 or whatever, but realistically, he's about 180, 185. So that's a 20-pound difference in their size. More than that, Jake's a bigger, stronger, and significantly taller guy with significantly more reach. Now, when you're looking at amateur boxing at the lower levels, your size doesn't matter that much. And you you essentially just have to acknowledge that you're going to be fighting guys at at crazy different weight classes. Anyone that has amateur boxed or amateur kickboxed will tell you they've probably fought guys 20, 30, 40 pounds heavier than them. They've probably fought guys in completely different weight classes. And that's just kind of how it works. So for the level that they were fighting at at the time, that worked out. To be able to fight at a different weight class, it didn't really matter because it it was more who was better. But now, as they've both matured, matured in their boxing ability as they're both getting better at boxing and and improving and slowly getting better and better and better the difference is expanding okay the value of that size is more important than ever now like i was saying in lower level boxing it's okay to have that size difference but as you get better the size difference becomes more and more important and that's why frankly I, i i'm not interested in a rematch I just think the size difference is too much for the rematch to be fair, right? Especially Jake's bigger than ever now. Jake's way bigger now than he was during their first fight. So to me, it it just wouldn't be a fair fight. And frankly, a lot of people get tied up with past fights and, and redemption fights and all this stuff. I don't. I think it's okay to lose, especially to a guy that's bigger than you. And, and you probably shouldn't have been fighting in the first place just from the size difference. I want to see Gib go fight other people. I want to see Jake fight other people. I don't really see their paths crossing again. And that's okay, man. That's not a knock on either of these guys. Frankly, I would love to see a Gibb versus Taylor too because I, I want to see Gibb beat someone up again and I want to see it with three three minute rounds and 10 ounce gloves because I think it would just be a total blowout. And I want to see Gibb be able to celebrate in the ring and really show the world because there was some, the, the changes that Gibb made, if he'd been, if Gibb 2.0 had showed up against Jake the first time against Jake at that time, I think Gibb would have won that fight because what Gibb did was he, was able to stay defensively responsible while applying pressure. And that's that's the big thing, right? But even with that, even with that adjustment, even with that improvement, I just don't see how he would be able to beat Jake Paul. And that's not a knock on Gibb at all, because like I said, Jake's just way too big for him. And that's not really fair when you you know think about it in the grand scheme of things. So at the end of the day, that's my opinion on it. It is what it is. Thanks, guys.